Hi, Peter Charles here, Hooked for Life Fly Fishing. And today I'm going to look at the choice between using a feather wing streamer or a bucktail. And I know there's a certain amount of aesthetics involved here, and, and I realize feather wings are beautiful, and we may just want to tie feather wings because they look lovely. And there's nothing wrong with that. If you want to use feather wings for the just the aesthetic alone, go for it. But I thought I'd deal with more of the practical aspects of whether we're going to use a feather wing or a bucktail. And uh, also, you know, my own preferences and how I usually fish. So I've got two flies here that are basically the same fly. We've got a feather wing uh, black ghost and we have a hair wing black ghost. This is a classic bucktail. And this would normally be called a streamer. This is also considered a bucktail even though there's no bucktail on it at all. It's, it's, that's rabbit fur, but it's fur or hair. Uh, so it's considered a bucktail even though there's no bucktail. And my brown trout weedmer only has a little bit of bucktail in it, and it's mostly goat hair. So if you've got a hair wing, whether it's squirrel, fox, whatever, and it's a streamer style fly, it's a bucktail. So hair versus feather, that's really the, the question here. And when we look at the old rangely type flies that were tied by Carrie Stevens back close to 100 years ago and how they're employed it makes a lot of sense to do a feather wing uh, a lot of these were tr uh, you know what's the word I'm looking for trolled there we go trolled behind canoes on the range of the lake some of them were fished in the river certainly but a lot of them uh, classic hair uh, feather wings were used in lakes and it made a lot of sense to use a feather wing because you get the profile. You don't have the current flattening down and it doesn't take much to move that feather wing. You know, just the stripping alone if you gave it some motion. And also sometimes they made feather wings where the, cur the feathers curled out. So when you stripped it would collapse and then would pop open and collapse, pop open. Very attractive uh, fish catching mechanism. So, you know, there's a lot of things you could do with feather wings in lakes uh, that make them work. When we get into rivers, you know, they become a little less practical. You've got to fish them in the right place. But also there's the challenge of tying feather wings. They're not the easiest thing to put together. If you like a challenge when you're tying, great. But, you know, I find feather wings a fiddle when I'm trying to turn out a bunch of flies to go fishing. Uh, I prefer to use hair wings, even though my local river, uh, you know, you could use feather wings on it with no trouble. You don't have the gradient and the turbulence and everything else that makes feather wings a problem. You know, high turbulent rivers, maybe not the best place to use a feather wing. But, uh, you know, I don't have that issue locally. But what I do have an issue with is durability. And these bucktails, especially anything done with rabbit, is tough. I mean, my poor little brown trout weemers get the crap beaten out of them by steelhead, and half the marabou is gone, and they're still catching fish. So they are, you know, hair wings have a great deal more survivability than a feather wing. I mean, you can have your feather wing destroyed on the first fish. So that's, you know, the, the, the idea of the less durable and the fact they're more of a fiddle to tie means I steer away from them, even though my local water is actually quite good for feather wings. Uh, the, if I'll put up a picture of the Grand here, and um, it's, you know, flat water basically for a lot of it, uh, and you just strip a feather wing through that and you'll do quite well. So, reality is, we, we could do a lot better uh, job sometimes with a feather wing, but is it worth the hassle? Is it worth the loss of durability? because the, the bucktail is a much more durable pattern. And just, we can get the mobility of a feather wing just by a choice of hair. You know, when you get into fox hair, which is very fine and moves beautifully, um, temple dog, all these types of you know, goat hair that I use on my uh, uh, weemer pattern, these very fine hairs move exceptionally well. They've got all the suppleness of a, he a feather. So the bottom line to this is if you're going to get into tying streamers and bucktails and you're not a, a, a person that ties for the aesthetic of tying, then really look at bucktails. And uh, if you want to tackle a feather wing, a, a streamer, go for it. Uh, I mean, they're lovely. 
and they do fish well when employed in the right way. But the, the bottom line is they're not that durable and you know, as soon as you get into faster flows, they can collapse a bit. The other thing you can do is you can, they're, they're very tricky to make them ride properly. And sometimes you can get a little bit of a twist going when you, when you strip them, if you haven't got them perfectly lined up. There's lots of little things that can go wrong with a feather wing streamer that is less of a problem with a hair wing, a bucktail. So give that some thought when you're trying to select which one you're going to work with. Turbulent rivers, high gradient rivers, fast flowing rivers, stick with the bucktails. If you're worried about durability, stick with the bucktails. And if you're not tying for the aesthetic, stick with the bucktails. Cheers.